Hello everyone. In this high yielding uh, INR series, I am going to tell you about in the INR number 75, I am going to tell you about the Wegener's granulomatosis, which is a, a small vessel vasculitis, right? Another important PYQ based topic. So Wegener's granulomatosis, remember this is the older name. So this is a small vessel vasculitis and it is also known as this is the new name which you have to be very careful right so that is called as granulomatosis with polyangitis so this name examiner may use because if you go through the textbooks you will always see they are using this name only and in that name they will be saying that it is also known as Wegener's granulomatosis I have kept opposite right so just remember this name granulomatos, granulomatosis with polyangitis see the name itself is telling granulomatosis means a lot of granulomas will be there polyangitis means many blood vessel will be affected right so now you understand so many blood vessel many granuloma so that is why we will see that they will be having necrotizing event so this is this is whatever wherever they are going to involve they will cause necrosis and they will be causing damage so necrotizing vasculitis will be present in these patient right and this necrotizing vasculitis will be involving which kind of blood vessel it is a small blood vessel so always remember it is a small blood vessel which is most commonly affected in Wegener's granulomatosis right so Wegener's will have triad so remember there are three things which will be commonly affected so this will be causing see necrotizing granulomatous inflammation is everywhere so it will involve blood vessels so necrotizing vasculitis when it will involve the respiratory tract necrotizing granulomatous inflammation of the respiratory tract and when they are going to involve the kidney that will be necrotizing glomerulonephritis right so now you can see these are the characteristic triad of the Wegener's they will involve blood vessel vasculitis they will involve respiratory tract means they will be involving both upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract right so both will be affected here and they will be involving kidney glomerular capillaries also right so glomerulonephritis so what are those things which we can see so clinical finding if you look at in this patient usually they will be 40 plus and they will be having necrotizing vasculitis as i said they will be causing necrosis wherever they will be present so in case of lower respiratory tract when they are involving the lower respiratory tract, what are the findings you will be expecting? Patient will be coming with cough, dyspnea and hemoptysis. So please remember, this kind of presentation can be mimicking like a cancer also because of hemoptysis. So that is why we have to be very careful, right? So cough, dyspnea and hemoptysis will be the common presentation, which will be the lower respiratory tract involvement sign. And upper respiratory tract involvement you will see by the involvement of the rupture of the nasal septum this was the pyq based question right from there they have mentioned that rupture of the nasal septum and chronic sinusitis otitis media so now you can see that if you look at the presentation you can see in this skin that skin is showing necrotizing a small vessel vasculitis now you can look at this one this is the upper respiratory tract involvement nas nasal septal perforation which was a pyq based question right and you can see in the middle ear there is a fluid right so that is the otitis media middle ear is filled with the fluid so this is the fl fluid area so otitis media and in uh, lung examination you can see the cavitation also so necrotizing lung granulomas and when you will see the radiological feature you will notice there is a cavity also so that cavity is present and when you are going to see the kidney they will have glomerulonephritis so that is what i was telling you they will be involving blood vessel they will be involving respiratory tract third thing will be the kidney right so three things are involved so in kidney involvement what you will find you can even see this in the rpgn rpgn is also called as crescentic glomerulonephritis right so crescentic glomerulonephritis is also called as rpgn so they can call rpgn and that is rpgn type 3 right so that is also necrotizing glomerulonephritis they will have hematuria they will have RBC cast because of the hematuria, right? So all these findings you will see in the Wegener's granulomatosis. Remember, this vasculitis is associated with Anka. So which Anka is common? C Anka is common. Remember, this was the, uh, you know, uh, PYQ. What Anka will be present in the Wegener's? Be careful about the language. What Anka will be present? When examiner says what Anka, your answer should be both C Anka and P Anka will be present. I repeat again. When examiner says which anka will be present, so both C anka, P anka will be present. But when examiner says what is most common anka, so please remember C anka will be present in 75% of the cases. 20% of the cases will be having P anka also. Rest of the 5% they don't have any anka. 
right so this remember these important points so c anka p anka both will be present but most common anka will be c anka right so in this patient when you are going to give a diagnosis you will take the biopsy and biopsy will be having lot of feature for example number one feature you will see serpentine necrosis so serpentine necrosis looks like a geographical map so that is why sometimes we call them as a geographical necrosis now you can see this is the area of necrosis and lot of nuclear debris is present that is why they are looking so blue so this is geographical necrosis which you see in wegener's granulomatosis then you will see the granuloma see the name itself is granulomatosis so granuloma will be there and that is why you will see in this granuloma how you will identify granuloma you will be noticing multi nucleated giant cell right so remember that granulomatous inflammation means you should be able to see multi nucleated giant cell and now you can see these are the multi nucleated giant cell and you can see so many nuclei are present again you can see here also multi nucleated giant cell and there are so many right so i'm just pointing out two these are all multi nucleated giant cells which we are seeing which confirms that it is a granulomatous inflammation and to confirm this we will also use elastin stain so in elastin stain what you will see you will find rupture of both external and internal elastic lamina remember you can see this black color is the elastin right and it should be through and through but what we are seeing it is not from here it is missing at this area it is missing at this area outside also you can see there is a here to here and from here to here it is missing so that means there is a rupture of the both external so both external and internal elastic lamina will be ruptured which we can observe by elastic stain right so this is what we are going to do so geographical necrosis then multi nucleated giant cell and the granulomatous inflammation then rupture of internal and external elastic lamina on elastic stain will confirm the diagnosis of wegener's on the biopsy then what we will do say after that the treatment remember this treatment i have taken from the harrison 21st edition they have given lot of things right so i just sorted out the important thing which examiner can ask you that treatment will be consisting of two phases right one is induction phase so and second is the maintenance phase so induction phase is active disease is put into the remission so they have to stop the active disease and after that they have to maintain so for that there are two regimens which they have mentioned and uh, they have mentioned both of them are having a you know similar kind of efficacy and the adverse side effect so i am just telling you what harrison has said cyclophosphamide with glucocorticoid this is one combination so we are using cyclophosphamide with glucocorticoid and second regimen consists of rituximab which is the monoclonal antibody against anti cd20 and glucocorticoid so these are the things so glucocorticoid is everywhere so either you use immunosuppressive or you can use you know monoclonal antibody for maintenance also we can use rituximab so rituximab azathioprine methotrexate or mycophenolate mofetil so these things are these drugs are used for maintenance phase of the wegener's so keep revising this topic and you will definitely get question from here in both neat pg exam and fmg exam best wishes to all of you and keep revising this topic from inr series